Bless you. <laughs> so I love dead people. And I'd sing about it. Moses went to Egypt to deliver all his folks. He spoke to the Pharaoh and said, let my people go. They started on a big old trip, stranded by the water. Pharaoh's army followed them. They should have never bothered. Now they're all dead, dead, dead. They're all dead. They ain't breathing anymore. Ain't no thoughts roaming through their heads. Cause they're all dead. <laughs> Joshua was in Jericho, walking around for days. The walls were tall, yes, they would fall, but people chose to stay. He was there with all his friends, about to sing a ditty. The walls fell down and squished the people into individuals. Now they're all dead, 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 they're all dead. You make it seem like I like singing about dead people. <laughs> they ain't breathing anymore. Ain't no thoughts running through their heads. Cause they're all dead. <laughs> 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 Hey you guys, I'm Venus Monique from the hit crime drama Vindication and you guys should definitely make sure you're catching the Maurice Brown show on Roku TV. <laughs>Welcome to Breaking Down the Four Walls. That was my good buddy, Deanna Lane, doing her stand-up clean comedy challenge. Very funny lady. But right now, I'd like to introduce to you our special guest on the Maurice Brown Show with the round table of comedians. But our special guest today is actress Brooklyn Whitmer from the hit film Don't Say My Name. Brooklyn, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Brooklyn, it is great to have you on the show today. i tell you right now, we're all excited about your success in the film, Don't Say My Name. And I want to give you a lot of credit for stepping up and hanging out with a bunch of crazy comedians today. God bless you, Brooklyn. Oh, I'm, I'm excited to have this fun chat and Bible study. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate you uh, hanging out with us. We're going to go down and bring out our first comedian. We're going to go down to Pompano Beach, Florida and bring out Felicia Frazier. What's up, Fifi? How are you? Hi. Hey, Maurice. Listen, I was not ready. It's so good to be on the show. Hi, Brooklyn. Hey. <laughs> yeah. How are you, Maurice? I am doing great. I uh, We had to start the show out with Deanna Lane. She said they're all dead. And a lot of people from the Bible are dead and they died in unbelievable ways. And Deanne just wanted to bring that that out. Uh, and it's a great way to start Bible study, don't you think? Not very inspirational, but I mean, we can, <laughs> we can try to bring some good from that. <laughs> Let's see where it leads us. Let's see where it leads, Fifi. Let's see where it, where it leads. Let's uh, let's go out to Oklahoma and bring out our good comedy buddy, Michelle Van Dusen. What's up, Michelle? How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Um, I just came in from outside, and the mosquitoes are crazy, so I have all these red bites on my neck, so I try to button up for, you know, be all fancy for you, so it's all buttoned up top high, okay? You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> totally understand. I, I'm in Austin, Texas, and they got kind of crazy today. They've been very good for the past few days, and they just got kind of crazy. Fifi, you're kind of used to the mosquitoes down there in Pompano Beach. I mean, can you explain that behavior? Well, I don't know. I just know that mosquitoes have a little vendetta against me. I don't know what I did, but they like <laughs> to bite me in unnecessary places. Yes, ma'am. I, I totally understand. I, I totally understand. 
eyebrow <laughs> one time, my top <laughs> lip swole double the size. I was like, you had all this face space. I don't understand, but yeah. I, I, I totally get it because <laughs> they, they tear me up as well. Let's uh, let's bring on our other comedian uh, from the Canadian part of the world. He's, he also stars in the film Church People. Uh, very funny guy. Thor Ramsey. What's going on, Thor? How are you? Well, I moved to California, just so you know. Ah, uh, okay. My friend Leland lives in, in uh, Canada. Leland Kloss, and he lives in Canada. I live in California. Always okay. have. Okay, not bad, Thor. My Thor. I, I, I get this. I, I do want to, I, I don't want to start off this way, but I'm going to have to correct Michelle. It's like, if you're in flannel, you're not dressed up. Just so you know, you're not you're not dressed no. up just because you button your flannel shirt at the top doesn't mean you're dressed up. Maybe in Oklahoma that's dressed up, but not where not where I come from. See, if, if, you, if you look at if Felicia's got that great blue fingernail polish. That's fancy. That's fancy. Not a not a buttoned up flannel shirt. So you know. It's not flannel. It's not flannel. It's actually a shirt like a blouse, but it just has this pattern oh. of of lumberjack. It does have a flannel pattern yeah. which is but i put know, a necklace on but you can't see it because i buttoned up well she's so. trying to keep the mosquitoes away thor and uh no, i don't know how, how well that's going to work out thor what's been going on in your world man it's been a long hey, time since we've seen you it's been a while i uh, just have i have a book that's being uh released right now as we speak Ooh. a novel oh, I made my first novel I love it. And, uh, I love excited. it. So we start the in, in a week. We start the official publicity campaign for that. So we're one week ahead of schedule with your show. So, but people can get it now on Amazon. Search for the End Times Comedy Show. The End Times Comedy Show. So it's okay. a novel about a comedian, believe it or not, who is living <laughs> in Los Angeles. Yes, and he comes from uh, one of the most prestigious evangelical families in the country, and he's trying to deconvert, but he's having a little trouble shaking the faith because. God's giving him dreams and Jesus is following. So it's it's problematic when you're trying to leave the faith I, and Jesus hey, is literally hey, following you. And um, Thor, you know what? I, I think I'm sensing a movie coming out of this. This no, you know, this one's too internal. That's why it's a novel. But uh okay. anyway, I got you. But it's, I got it's a satire. It should be funny. And uh I hope people you can go to Amazon End Times Comedy Show, search for it. We well, I mean, it does come out as a movie. There's a short, fat, redheaded woman that's in that movie. Just gonna put that out there. I'm writing a uh, screenplay just for that woman. Right, right. So, it, who's in flannel? I'm just saying. <laughs> Ladies in flannel is exactly it. So I'm listen. Fancy, we're penalty calling it I'm fancy in Oklahoma. <laughs> That's a beautiful title. Yeah, yeah I think so. I think we got to so, hit. you know, listen, today we're going to talk about a subject that relates very closely, Thor, to a film that you're in. And, and I want everybody to be aware that Thor Ramsey can be seen in the film created and directed by Christopher Sean Shaw called Church People. Great film. Hilarious. Hilarious film, but it's got a great point that it brings that is well worth you watching and checking out. And Thor, as I say that, to give you a background on what we've been studying in Acts chapter 4, we're talking about how uh, ministers of the word of God can become drunken with power. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And this is what's happening in Acts chapter 4. Because uh, we have a miracle here by Peter and John. A lame man now has been able to walk, unable to walk by the power of Jesus Christ. And they got a problem with that. And they're so drunken with power, they can't see God in the midst of this situation because they're angry that these guys are getting more attention than they are. And church people is kind of sort of like that in a way. Am I right, Thor? Sort of, kind of, a little bit, maybe? Well, I mean, a little bit, maybe. <laughs> it's really it's really about the methodology, us feeling yeah. like we need to help God along with his message because he didn't really go do a good job giving us the message of, of the gospel. So we want to help him along and, and, uh, have a car show after other after the Easter service or a you know a petting zoo or you know whatever it happens to be. <laughs> yeah. so, um, and the blue nail polish attracts mosquitoes, just so you know, Felicia. Just so you know. So just <laughs> yeah. okay. See you there, darling. Thank you so much. <laughs> so look, hey, listen, let's open up with prayer. Thor, how about opening us up in prayer? Sure. Brother? I'd be happy to. Uh, Father, we just come to you now by the grace of your son, Jesus Christ. So thankful for your mercy, 
uh, that the Christian life is continually and always of your grace. And so we're just thankful for your grace today, asking you for the grace of your spirit as we open your word to lead us, to guide us, and uh, to encourage those who are um, tuning in. Is that, do you, I don't even say tune in. I don't know how you, who are watching this, if they've tuned in. I'm not even sure how that works, but uh, to those watching yes. us, we pray your blessing in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yes, you had it right. Tune into a broadcast watching. like this? I don't even know because, you they're, know. They're, they're uh, watching. They're tuning in. And plus, we're going to be on Roku TV tomorrow about oh, midday. Well, so you be, got it right. You yeah, got it you right. Tune in to Roku. Okay. Arizona too, right? I had, to, I had to mention that. Yeah. What's that? Isn't there a station in Arizona that this is on also? Oh, New Mexico. We're also on, on KCHF TV in Albuquerque, New Mexico as well. So you had it right. Yeah. Okay, okay. I feel better now. I feel better. I hate correcting myself during a prayer, but it happened. Sometimes it happens, Thor. We have to correct ourselves even when we're praying sometimes, dude. Uh, so anyway, check it out. We are going to start out in verse 29 of Acts chapter 4. And we're going to go... We're going to pick it up there as we're talking about the uh, situation about the name of Jesus being used to heal a crippled man, which is absolutely asinine. But it did happen. And it happens because people get drunk with power. Let's kick this thing off. Verse 29 and verse 30. And as they say at Mount AME Zion Church, read. And here it is. And now, Lord, behold, their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. So we're looking at this. We enter the realness of witnessing for the name of Jesus Christ. And, you know, we don't understand in America our Starbucks Christian Christianity. People will kill you. For saying that and for standing up for Christ. But we don't deal with that in America. You know, if you go abroad, then you're dealing with persecution and you're dealing with execution. And and in this sense, of course, Paul, uh, not Paul, but Peter and uh, John are in a situation where they could literally be uh, whipped, flogged. Uh, they could be incarcerated and and God will extend his arm of protection around us from our enemies. But, you no, know, Thor, we don't deal with that kind of intensity in America. And well, I, 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 I'm wondering. I think it's a little more subtle. Um, I think it's it's growing, I think, in America. Um, I think that's okay. what the whole divide, you know, there's a huge, the divide in our country, I, I don't think is, I mean, some of it's political, but I think it's really a worldview divide. And, okay. uh, and that worldview divide is where you'll you'll be shunned or, you know, ours is more of a shunning that happens socially unacceptable. You become kind of a, the unpopular person. Um, but I think it's moving a more dangerous direction now, especially when we have people arguing for people argue for now for the suppression of speech rather than yeah. defending speech. People are arguing for restricting speech because yes. they don't like what you yes. said. And that's the first step in silencing because, you know, not everyone likes to hear the guy. It's funny. I don't know if it's funny, but it, even the word sinner, which is, you know, I, I think now that we're Christians, are we all Christians? Are we just, okay. But now yeah, that we're, we're all good. We're, we're oh, good. Good. But, uh, or, or the great, if you've tuned in and you're and, and uh, you're not a Christian, you're here, but, um, but this, the word sinner is like, it's still offensive to a lot of people. Because of how they categorize humanity. And it's like they're sinners. Yeah. And those are people who've done really, you know, those are people who are out murdering and, uh, you know, living on the streets or whatever. And then those are sinners. I'm not a sinner like that. I'm not a prostitute standing on the street corner. Right. I say prostitute on your show. Anyway, I'm not one of those you can. people. You can. You're absolutely you can. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm one of these, I'm one of these other people. I'm just a normal, good, you know, I'm a, a good human being. I'm not a sinner. So mm -hmm. they categorize things like that. So it's still, even that word is offensive to people. So um, yeah, I don't think we encounter it in uh, quite the same way that some of our brothers and sisters around the world do, but it's a, it's been referred this way. I've heard it spoken of this way. Um, it's called the soft totalitarianism. 
Soft means okay. it comes in very subtly. Like, all right, if if they can restrict speech, then eventually it's almost like they put in a because right now everything's social in terms of our persecution. Yeah. So they could actually right. Right. theoretically put in social <laughs> limitations on, you know, if, if you if you if you get so many strikes against you, maybe you can't shop at certain places online. Maybe you can't, you know, they won't carry your books or it's like they can actually affect your livelihood now because you're not following the quote unquote narrative that everyone's following. Uh, right. The narrative of the world or whatever happened with that narrative happens to be, but it's a, it's a forced morality upon the nation itself. And it's, yeah. and you know, I, I can keep talking. So you better jump in. Well, I like what you're saying, Thor. And I, and I think as, <laughs> as it relates to comedians, you know, it's like, okay, now they're trying to suppress our, our thoughts our, our slants, our opinions, whether it's funny or not in, in comedy, it's supposed to be funny. If you go to a comedy show, you're supposed to understand these are all jokes. So sit down and, and don't get up and slap me. So what I'm what I'm saying is that, OK, uh, comedy used to be a place where you could say just about anything and, and, and nobody got mad at me. There was a time. Uh, when no one got upset about what a comedian would say on stage. And now, so we're, we're looking at what you're describing, I think, is the cancel culture. Yeah. Okay. You can't talk about certain things or certain groups or whatever. I mean, look, just don't go to a comedy show. If you have an agenda, okay, just don't go to a comedy show. Well, and so did now- you start comedy, Maurice? What year did you start? Just out of curiosity. Uh, 2010. Okay. Okay. 2010. So, and, and so you're looking at this thing. I remember there was a time when Red Fox on primetime in the early 70s could say the N-word out loud. And it was absolutely hilarious. Nobody got mad. They definitely didn't cancel them. And I'm, I'm not saying that you should go out saying that. The, the era that we're living in right now, people can't take anything. Fifi, what's your, what's your take on it? No, I was just wondering how old you are because you said you remember the early 70s. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm old. Fifi, I, I, I'm 57. I'm an old dude. I mean, I'm up there. I've been around, Fifi. You know what I mean? Early there, are, there are repeats. There are repeats. Maybe you three? It's called rerun. <laughs> <laughs> rerun. There you go. No, but Thor, no, you're right. I mean, it's, it, we're, it's, it's kind of backwards now. So instead of the country is about being able to say you know, what you want to say. And, and, you know, sometimes people should be, you know, curved. Hey, dude, you might want to say, it. but for the most part, you should be able to say what you want to say. Yeah. Now you can't do that because I think it's getting back to what we're reading. Like you can talk about just about anything uh, when it comes to religion, but you can't say the name Jesus. Right. You say the name Jesus Christ, you got a problem. Okay, you, you, what did we say last week, Fifi? You can worship Iron Man and nobody's going to get mad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You Boy, can worship true. Iron Man and all those who's yeah. the Avengers. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Could you pray at our congressional dinner in the name of Iron Man? Sure. So they, you know, I, yeah. I'm just saying you can't right. say that name. And, and so things, it's just, it's just the way it is in our society right now. But I do want to say, getting back, to our craft. Michelle, let me ask you, when you're on stage, yeah. do you feel like you have to be careful about what you say? Yes, because I swear all the time on stage. <laughs> like I'm just, just throwing out all these awful words. Uh, no, not for myself. It's the flannel. <laughs> it is the flannel. My Kentucky flannel has just happened. Um, <laughs> no, because I... That, you know what? I do sometimes before I go into a place, I do have to sit and think, will this joke work here? But okay. it's not that I'm afraid of the joke. It's just the audience is a different audience. And so they might not like it. So if I'm doing, you know, a, a retirement home, um, I'm not going to start doing a bunch of jokes about, you know, like my kids when they were infants, because it's like, Eh, it's not the same. It doesn't fit that crowd. Um, so no, I'm not really worried about that. I do have some jokes I'm working on that I need some feedback on. So I am worried about actually doing those because I don't know if I should. So I have a couple of those that I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can say this. Um, but no, not, I, I don't, I don't think I really have any issues in that sense because I'm not um, in your face kind of comedian. Okay. So 
uh, um, you wouldn't you wouldn't be offended coming to my show. You might be bored, but you definitely will not. Be <laughs> okay, <laughs> Fifi, what, what what you got, Fifi? I, you got something? I was just thinking. Um, I never felt like that. Kind of felt like Michelle, right? Um, but recently. I've been kind of feeling that way about some of the jokes that I've been doing for like years and years and years because of the shift yeah. in the dynamic of how culture sees things. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah. I used to kill when I first started comedy. I used to kill with this whole seven minute bit about how my mom used to spank us, right? Yeah, it's a whole yeah. bit about whoopings. I have a song that goes with it, and you know, I mean, it's hilarious. But I haven't yeah. done that bit in probably three years. And, and, and why funny. is that? Yeah. Because you know, nowadays the gentle parenting is all the rave, and oh, yeah, yeah, I don't want people to. I kind of think sometimes no that parenting. people will will be offended by what I say and the fact that I'm taking, I take it lightly or I look at it in a comedic way that, you know, my mom wasn't a coddler, you know, my mom, she was a hardcore mom, you know, she didn't play the radio, you know, as they say. Um, and I think that, you know, those things, they made me who I am, but some people are right. like, oh, you're, you're, you know, glamorizing abuse. And I don't right. see it that way, but I don't know if the people in the audience would see it that way. And I yeah. sometimes with the, with this new culture, I think sometimes that they might be offended instead of actually yeah. seeing it the way that I see it. So I haven't well, done it in a while. Well, see, Fifi, I believe you're probably at the cutoff. Like, you, you know, you're young enough where you could uh, possibly understand that Folks younger than you might be offended, but people, you know, your age and above, it's hilarious. You'll kill, you, you will continue to kill. Right. And, and, and that demographic, like, for example, right. uh, Brooklyn, you are a young lady in a different era. And what Ms. Frazier's talking about might scare your generation if you start talking about, you know, uh, extension cords and. <laughs> You know, outside to get your own stick. You know, <laughs> getting whipped and uh, you, you know, Throwing all that. Stuff. Does that <laughs> is that a shocking idea for someone like yourself, Brooklyn? If you heard that type of talk on stage, um, honestly, I feel like it's different for different households. Um, I know, yeah, for our generation, I feel like it is a different topic. Um, it's not yeah. discussed or yeah. done. Um. But yeah, like like I said, it's different for different generations. Um, so, but yeah, I feel like it, it's it's different nowadays than it was years ago, and that's part of the shift. That's part of the the generations. Like you know, from years back to now, things evolve and change, and it might not always be the way that we like, or maybe we do like. And so that's part of, I guess, the the evolving way of culture. You know, so well, it's, it's OK, Brooklyn. You were a good kid when you were growing up. See, we're Bay Bay's kids. We we were some <laughs> bad ones. OK, hey, Brooklyn, we were some bad babies. We had to we had to be take care. So it's OK, Brooklyn. I get it. You were a good lady. And I and I understand. I totally understand what I do. I, want to say. I wanted to be a nun. I'm just going to put that out there. So go ahead. Talk about how bad you were. Go ahead. <laughs> That wasn't I my remember when I became a bad mom. Like, I remember that day Wait. when I oh. sold their yeah. PlayStation and they're like, what? Anyway, uh, go ahead. Maurice. Well, I, I do want to say, because Brooklyn, you were at the International Christian Film Festival. Yeah. Did you get a chance to see the film by Anesh Daniel, uh, the Graham Stain story? I did not. No. So, so, so Thor, this was a film about an, an, a, an American missionary that went to India in the early 1900s to uh, work with the leper community. Leprosy was a problem over in that region of the world in the early 1900s. And he transformed the entire community and uh, he paid for it with his life. And, and they also executed his two children, but he transformed the entire community. And I mean, that kind of missionary work, you know, it, it kind of gets my attention and it convicts me because you don't have to go all the way over there to, to, to share, to be a missionary. You don't have to go across the water. There, there are so many homeless people running around in our, in our nation 
all over the United States. I mean, I mean, they're in bad ways. And, and so I just think that, you know, when you look at the passage in Acts chapter four, how Peter would willingly give his life up, willingly be flogged to continue to promulgate the gospel. And, and it just it just makes you go, man, what, what happened to those kind of guts? You know what I mean? I know I don't have. Them. I'm just throwing it out like you don't see that kind of uh, following of Christ in anymore. But certainly so not. Saying, in America. You're saying Felicia should do the bit. Is that what you're saying? Is that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> She's already been flogged. So. Well, but, you know, what's, what's interesting, though, is how how it had because Felicia, I'm not going to ask her, right, but you she looks pretty young. So yeah. The I'm fact 36. That, yeah. So that's pretty young. Uh, in my book. So that's pretty young. So it's it's interesting, though, just culturally how it shifted. Like, uh, I think like even 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, you could uh, do bits on your parents spanking you. Yeah. And even though the audience might not agree right. with that, they would still laugh. They would they they would hold enough judgment to laugh. And right. now it's become the fact that if you laugh now, now you're participating in the abuse of that, uh, of like, oh, now if I laugh at Felicia, I'm participating in the abuse that her parents, you know, uh, uh, perpetrated. So it's it's a crazy, it's just, it's a different, it's the perception thing. And once yeah. once you start yeah. sensing that from the audience, you, you really can't do the bit anymore mm -hmm. because at that point you're losing them. So at it's what interesting how, culturally like yeah it, what i think was what, what i thought was really interesting about felicia's point is how she began the bit and then slowly it just culture it, it shows the change of culture while the bit stays the same the culture around the bit changed right fifi can i ask you this did you did you start kind of backing off of it did you kind of notice a certain response in the audience where people were just not feeling it and you were like you know what i think i better but maybe stop doing this. Did you ever get a vibe like that? Um, a couple of times, yes. Okay. But I think my my response was more just paying attention and keeping my my ear to the ground of the culture in general. And you know, I think that's sad for comedian. I'll oh, go ahead, Michelle. I was just gonna say, just that whole idea of us paying more attention to the culture and like backing off of something is completely opposite of what this passage is talking about, you know, cause they, they're like, they, once they find yeah. it, it more yeah. prayer, they finally got to the point of what they wanted, you know, and now Lord, behold, they're threatening and granted to us boldness that we can speak your word, you know, like go ahead and you stretch forth your hand with signs and wonders. And sometimes I think as comedians, as performers, because of the social pressures around us and, and as Christians, we tend to back off of the things that really keep going forward because, you know, your truth is you were flogged as a kid, you know, you were spanked and this is how it happened. And, yeah. and I like what Thor was saying, like, oh, if we laugh, it's as if I participated in spanking you. No, I didn't. I just thought the way you presented it was actually kind of funny and a truth at the same time. And it it it's sad that when we're presenting truths that, you know, because laughter is supposed to open our hearts up to receiving the truth. And, right. and it's sad that when, when people hear something and they get offended and they can't receive, you know, and see that you're walking in grace now. And, and clearly you don't do that now, or do you? No, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just, it's just amazing. Well, well, listen, I, I remember as a kid, my dad had these boundaries for me and my brother when we got on our bike. Like this, you do, you do not go outside oh. this boundary, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm wait, one day I am like way outside the boundary. And I think, I mean, I'm having a ball. I'm whistling. I'm like, whew, whew, whew. I'm at this stoplight. And I just happen to look to my right. <laughs> you ever uh, you ever seen the movie Jaws? <laughs> You've seen Jaws. Too scary. Yeah. And, and I, <laughs> I, I felt like Roy Scheider, you know, in the, in the boat. Anyway, 
So I and it, it was it was a wrap, and I, I had to pay dearly for that. But here's the thing, you know, that stuff, in my opinion, it it, it helped us. I don't. It, it, there was no scarring about it. It was you knew your parents are right. They were they were trying to set a standard, and when you broke the standard, there was a certain consequence that came with it. Right. And you just kind of understood it. You never, I never held anything against my parents for what they did because I knew I was wrong. And every time I, I was dead wrong. I feel so and, much you better. Know, so because, you know, we just we right. have a four-year-old now. We have a four-year-old boy. Oh, and, bless yeah. You. I'm telling you, it's like you know. We had two, <laughs> I thought it was a good parent when we had two girls. I literally thought, man, I'm a good parent. And then we had a boy, and I'm like, I, I. I'm a horrible human being and a horrible Christian and a worse parent. And that's how I literally feel because this kid, this kid well, he, we, I feel better now that it's not, didn't scar him for life because <laughs> this, this kid has had, I, I've used the butt several times because there's just no stop this. He, anyway. Uh. <laughs> Thor, the, Boys are Thor, great, great. Just FYI. Give him some Thor, dirt, see. give him a tree. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want that. They want to but climb see, furniture that, and dive off of the refrigerator. Yes. But well, there, yeah, there lot. is there is nothing, there is nothing wrong. And see, we're Christian comedians and we and, and we have to be careful about what we talk about. We're not, you know, using the expletives and dropping F bombs and all this stuff. We can't even have a normal conversation because people want to wear masks in this society, you know. Whether they're in church or not, it's like you—you you mean to tell me you're going to get upset about that when you know what happened? You know this is real. If I were lying, if I were making up something and just being a jerk for the sake of being a jerk, well, that's one thing. But if I'm being relevant and if I'm telling you the truth, and you, if if you weren't in a certain demographic because certain people are around, you would laugh your head off. You would absolutely laugh your head off. But it's the culture that we're living in. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I don't like backing off something that I think is funny. I haven't gotten to that point yet, Fifi, which I probably mm -hmm. should. I mean, I, with the, the apples that have been right. thrown at me, should have known that. But I, I just can't help myself. If I think the darn thing is funny, I'm going to let it rip. As long as I can check yeah. my moral compass, right? Check my moral. Am, am I being nasty right now? Am I just being a jerk? Or am I just talking about reality and making light of it? And maybe, just maybe, it can help someone here tonight if I just get it out. G getting back to what Michelle Van Dusen said about, you know, these guys are willing to get out there and tell the truth regardless to what the consequences are. And I think as Christian comedians, we got to take that attitude. Sometimes, I mean, I get it, Fifi. You know, sometimes you just like, hey, look, I'm not going to, you know, make everybody's night a bad night. I, I, I'm going to play ball. I get it. Sometimes you got to do that. But for the most part, I think you got to stick to your truth. Your truth is your truth. And if that's funny to you, then say it again, as long as you're not being reckless and you know, being a and jerk there. Another thing, Sue, is like you can actually turn that bit into why you can't do a bit about spanking anymore. I think that's oh, absolutely. Subject because what's, what's interesting about how culture has changed also is that, um, you know, it used to be like, sure, you know, you'd be offended by something somebody said, but you didn't live in a culture at the time where you felt like you had to tell them right at that moment. And we live in a <laughs> right. culture now where as soon as you're offended, or as soon as somebody's offended, they have to let you know right that moment that you're offended. Right. And then everyone else has to know that you're offended. So it becomes this whole, there's there's a really a self, an un- well, I don't think self-righteousness is ever attractive, but our secular oh, culture now is suffering from self-righteousness of biblical proportions. Yes. And it's the most unattractive type of self-righteousness there is, which is odd because a lot of them probably don't even believe in absolute morality. That's the crazy thing. And yet they believe right. in this very particular type of morality that we should all subscribe to. And if we don't, well, that's offensive. So right. and they're going to let yes. us know instantaneously. And I think that's the problem with comedy right now or that the, what that comedians can experience right away is that. No, I think Christian crowds have always been more, in, in my opinion, more gracious um, mm -hmm. a lot of times. But um, but they've Christian crowds have become more sophisticated. And uh, so and I remember back in the day going from secular clubs to Christian events. And it was like going from 
you know, it was like going from a prison to a theater because in a theater, <laughs> like you could hear a pin drop. You a pregnant pause would be just that. Everyone would like be quiet. And but, you know, you come from places where the blender is louder than you are. And it's like and you're like you're struggling to get the lines out and everything. And those crowds were a little bit jaded and some of them weren't even conscious. But but you'd go to that theater setting. But the crowds have become more sophisticated. So right. even Christian crowds can be a little tougher sometimes. Today. Right. The lights are low. They got spotlights now. It's serious. Yeah. We like, <laughs> no, no, been Chris, to comedy Chris, club. We know what the score is. Yeah. What's up, Michelle? What's up, Michelle? Oh, no, I was I was being the judgmental Christian. I heard it. That's the perfect look. That's how to look at some of these crowds. I was I was doing a show once and I mentioned I was telling a story about a guy in a fishnet shirt right on the interstate that I saw. And I was just describing it. Now, he was catching all the, the men. The, the booker. Get this. This is a Christian show. The booker came onto the stage. Now, everybody's laughing. Everybody's having a great time. But the booker comes onto the show and she whispers. She says, you just offended my nephew. And I would really appreciate it if you would apologize. He had on a fishnet shirt. I didn't even see the guy. And he went, uh, sure, sure. Apologize to the guy. I apologize. And then I just continued doing my, my show. But what was ridiculous about that is I shouldn't have had to apologize. Right? I apologize. You have poor well, that's a, to me, that's there's an on. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Michelle. Go ahead. I was just saying, I apologize. You have poor taste in clothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what pretty much everyone in the audience said after the show. They were like, you should have apologized. He's the idiot, yada, yada. But what I'm saying is, it's amazing how this is a Christian crowd. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing how easily in this particular era, Thor, getting back to what you said, and I think you mentioned it as well, Fifi. I mean, the, the Christian crowds have become more sophisticated now. Uh, too sophisticated for their own good, and and you just you, you certain things, and of course my example is probably fairly extreme, but it's still an issue where you have to be careful what you say as a comedian, even if you're a clean comedian, because you may offend somebody. That's that'd be a great bit though. I think that would be a great bit now as a comedian. You could actually adopt that for your whole act. You could do a bit, and at the end of the bit, you go, "I hey, know I'd like to apologize," and just name that group that could possibly be offended by that bit. Do your next bit. At the end, go. No, I'd like to apologize. I go. No, I'm not, I might try to incorporate that. That would be fun. so good. Robert G. Lee does good. something like that. Like he starts off like I just first want to apologize for being a white male. Blah blah. Right. Like he just does this whole thing, right. and then yeah. goes on with his stuff. But I think it's funny in between each piece because it get, it get more ridiculous, you know, but definitely well, I have well, a this, disclaimer in my show. So I get it. I totally get it. So, yeah, I, I, I want to go to verse 31 because this this brings out a very important point about our, our the state of our church today. Verse 31 says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. There's no there's no power in our church in America today. And it kind of now this definite. Well, it, it sort of kind of, again, lines up with church people. But I, I don't think the church in America is on one accord. You know, we got so many different um, uh, denominations out there. We got so many types of churches. We got so many types of coffees. We got so many. I was in church the other day. I was the only one that had a suit on in church. I was looking around. And, and they were looking at me like, who died? I'm like, Jesus? I, I, I just, what I'm saying, I, what, what I'm saying is it's like the culture is so dip church. I'm not saying you have to wear a suit. You don't wear a suit. Don't wear work. Don't wear one. But everything has changed tremendously. You shouldn't, in you shouldn't be shame for wearing one either. That's the point. Right. You know, oh no! I, be, I will definitely continue to to wear yeah. my you know, okay. Steve Harvey suits, right, but good. but my 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 thing is is that I don't understand this shift that's happening in America, and sometimes I don't know if it's for the better or not. You know what I mean? But when you look at this story in Acts four, how these guys moved with power? Why did they move with power? Because they were on one accord. And we don't see that kind of power in our church today because, by and large, there's a there, there's we're, there, we're not on one accord. 
We're not on one. I think also the boldness that you see nowadays isn't a boldness that comes from, you know, your walk with Christ, your faith in God. The boldness comes from your own self-righteousness a lot of times. I'm bold in what I believe you should be doing. I'm not necessarily bold in projecting the faith that I have in God. And I think that's a major difference. Yeah. You know, you know what's interesting here, too, as you were talking about power, uh, Maurice, is if you just go back one verse, it's like, uh, um, while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Uh, it's like while the gospel is being preached, the Lord was healing people. So, and I think that's an yes. issue with the church today too, is like, <clears throat> because we've tried to appeal to culture so much and one, we want to be, we not, we don't want just to appeal. We want to be accepted. And that's the thing. That's the difference. It's not just, a, we want to appeal to culture. We want to be accepted by culture. Right. And I yeah. think when we do that, then we are afraid to preach the gospel, but it's in the God, you know, the, Paul says in Romans, the gospel is the power of God. That's the power of God. And when we withdraw from preaching the gospel, the church, there is is. There, there's less power in the church. Yes, there it is. And we want to be like the world. My wife and I were at a church. We we're trying to find the pastor. We we're trying to find the pastor and we couldn't tell because everybody had their pants taken down. Wow. Fifi. You okay? Anyway, I, it wait, was that? But <laughs> I'm not I'm, touching that with a ten foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it just it's it's like we're trying to look like the world, and mm. and, and somehow and and and, and we think somehow that's going to make them like us better, right? And 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 in fact, I think they're losing respect for you. You know, it's kind of like the person who wants to be liked and they try really hard and you can tell they want to be liked. And for some reason that makes you not like them. Yeah. But the person who like, if you get a sense from a person, they don't really, this is pretty sad to say, but you get a sense that they don't really care if you like them or not. <laughs> you tend to like yeah. them, yeah, you know, you know, I, because, they they're, because they're not, they're not getting into the relationship with you as an exchange. And I yeah. think that, that, and they, what they recognize there is grace. Grace is not an exchange. There's not a bargain with God and grace. It's like, I just read the other day. It's like, don't ever make a bargain with God because all you're going to end up with is your part of the bargain. Like if you don't, if you just go to the Lord without trying to bargain with him, like, Lord, if you do this for me, then and like, God, okay, I'll do that for you, whatever. But had you not bargained with me, I would have done so much more. It's that idea. It's like, and I think when you come to a relationship where you're, Wanting so desperately to be like, it's, well, it's the audience, and the comedian. I, and I think most of us know this when we, we've all been at the stage in our comedy careers or our acts, or maybe it was last week. Maybe it's just emotional sometimes, but you walk up on stage and you want to be like, <laughs> you want to be accepted so very badly. And they sense that. Now, I think Christian audiences sometimes have pity on you, but secular audiences do, they like, that is, that is blood to sharks to them. It's like, right. you want me to like you? No, thank you. Uh, I'm not going to do it. But if you walk up there, like, I don't really, you know, I've got this stuff to say and I'm going to say it. And if you, you guys just happen to be here. Great. <laughs> so you're going to hear everything I have to say. Well, if you don't like the it, audience. Okay. Yeah. And that's, and that's, go ahead. Uh, uh, I was going to say, I feel like you have to know your why, like, why are you doing things? Is it for God? Yeah. Is it for to please man? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And so like you have to be and that that will cause genuine faith. And when you're genuine, it's going to come across as as not any type of animosity or any like uh, judgmental way. It's like it's it's sincere. It's genuine. And like I said, yeah. back to that. Why is so important. I'm wanting that so much more nowadays. Like, why do I believe this and that? And like going to the root of that, you know, and I'm like knowing it in your heart and your mind and bringing it across as truthfully as you know from the word of god that's so good well, like that that's so good because if you know your why and like thor you're just talking about doing this whole exchange and it and that exchange it, it's like i want this but god's like no no here's my this is what i require and we spend all this time arguing with him, like, yeah, I don't want to do that. But what if you do this? Oh, but what what about this? Oh no, okay. Well, what about this? And so then we we have all these expectations that aren't getting met, you know, because God's not meeting our expectations because his plan is, well, this, this is what I said. So do this. Yeah, but my expectation is here. It's not getting met. 
so then we get angry at God. We get angry at all the people that are supposed to be Christians. They're supposed to be preaching, mm-hmm. but they're not preaching to us. Why aren't you preaching to me? Okay, where's the band? Where's the the, the bull ride after service? Where's the potluck food yeah. so I can at least feel good while I'm here? You know, so it's it's we're trying to do all this stuff um, versus just doing what he told us to do. Right. And yeah. that's where the power comes from. You know, they laid it out before God and said, okay, you, you know, we're going to just follow you. They're telling us we can't, but we're going to keep following you. And they leaned into him. They prayed. And then God showed up because he, with power, with the healings, with the miracles, everything showed up because they were doing his standard. And I don't know why I said all that. Go ahead. All right. Well, well, no, like, no, I, like, I like the idea about he's not meeting our standards. Right. Yeah. That's exactly it. There are standards. That's <laughs> and that's and that's why that coffee's all over the floor, Michelle, because of that bull ride. But anyway, you know, all right, look, you know what? I'll tell you right now, we're going to finish this chapter. This is verses we're picking up at verse 32. Fifi, mm-hmm. we're gonna finish this thing. Four verse verses th- in 46 minutes. <laughs> Come on, wait a minute. Hold Good on. Luck. Okay. <laughs> verses 32. 37. Let's go. Let's knock it out. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power, I'm tempted to stop here, Fifi, but I'm going to keep reading. And with great <laughs> power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and dis- and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Did you know, and I know you're aware of this, Thor, that that is, you know, if, if you look at the Jewish culture, you'll never see them begging for money. This, this is, what I just read is still a staple within the Jewish community. They look out for each other. Mm. If they find out that one is close to being on the street or homeless, they will gather around that guy and make sure he's okay. It, that goes on to this day. And now, as the adopted sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ, we, we don't see a lot of that in the Christian church in America. Yeah. We just don't. We don't. And going back to the formative stage of Christianity, which I just read, Look at that power. Just look at that power. I mean, everybody's got each other's back. I got you. I got you. We love to say that in our culture today. I got you, bro. I got you. But no, you don't. Okay. Let me (laughs) let me just say this. We gotta, we've got (laughs) we have got to take notice of that in America. Like getting back to the bare bones. And it's a simple thing. It's not about being holier than thou. It's just about caring for your fellow man, your fellow right. brother in Christ. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like yeah, how many? We, we got to get out of the building because that's yeah. that's the thing is people think that church is a building. They're not realizing that church is you. If you're a Christian, you're part of the church. <laughs> I just threw that up there um, for you. <laughs> There's no bad. Well, no, but, the one but, in the Michelle, no, you're right. Thus breaking down the four walls. You got to get outside of the church. Well, according to yeah, this passage, know. we should we should sell the church <laughs> and take the proceeds. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too. Jesus talked about how the poor. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's. <laughs> just, no, I. Just, you know, Michelle, oh. I'm 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 just bringing out the fact that. Man, you, you just don't see that kind of togetherness in the church. What church do you go to that you're not seeing? You this? don't see that I'm, level of grace. Michelle, well, it doesn't exist everywhere. It might exist right. at the church where you go. Yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> not, it's, it's, it's not a corporate not thing. No. It's not everywhere. Yeah. There, is, there is a false sense of um, 
community that a lot yeah. of churches have this this mirror or this image of um what do they call them christian uh, they call them worship centers yeah it's not a church <laughs> um where they have this center where they facilitate and they do things for the community but they really don't they just have church and they have conventions and then that's it and they're not really sowing anything into the community they're not sowing anything into people it's mm -hmm. it, it's not the same there's there isn't a grace being extended they're not there isn't real christian value that is you know penetrating mm -hmm. the surrounding community it's just not existent in a lot of places Oh. And and that's not to say, Michelle, that you know you that that it's like completely absent. There are some places where there's togetherness and so forth. I'm not saying it does not exist, but it greatly lacks, yeah. I think. And because you you know this kind of power we're talking about here, I mean these guys are they're they're bringing the power, and right. you don't. If, see if it, it existed, we would actually that's what would attract people. Mm -hmm. if it's, the power, it's, the, it's the people that are attractional. It's like if you want to be an attractional church, it's the people that are the attraction. It's okay. not your, yeah. you know, what, what do you, what do you, what's that All phrase? Right. The dog and pony show, which I've I've never actually seen a dog and pony show, but uh, but I have You're seen the Penguins good. of Sea World, which they discontinued <laughs> too. So it's just like like Penguins have been canceled. It's pretty sad, but uh, the point is yeah. that uh, well, whatever the point is, I made the point. It's already done. No. So I, I think that I, I first of all we got through the people. The, uh, that's where you were. People. Oh, the, the people. Yeah. That's it. That's it. The people. The people. We got through the chapter. Praise God. I just think that I'm. Gonna, I'm going to end with this, and I'm going to let you guys, you know, let everyone know where you're going to be this week. And do I definitely want you to try to talk about your book a little bit? I just want to say that, you know, sometimes it's not all about this right here. It's your actions. You know, how are you moving? You know what I'm saying? Can can do people feel that you you care about them? You mm. know what I mean? Are you really if you're like really walking the walk, you don't necessarily have to talk the talk because people can your actions speak for you. You know, and I, I, I've gotten to that point on stage where it's like, you know, I always have to feel like I got in, you know, hey, may the peace of Christ you, you guys. Be with you and your families tonight, everybody. God bless you. you know, I feel like I, I always, in a secular room, you know, I feel like I have to end like that, right? And I was like, oh, you know what, man? Why don't I just drop that? You're here. Everybody's drinking their beer. Everybody's cussing like there's no tomorrow. Just be the standard, man. Just go up there. Do your thing. And one thing I noticed about secular clubs, they don't care if you're cussing. You just got to be funny. They do not care. If you don't use one curse word, as long as you're funny, they're fine. They're good with it. You got to stay in your lane and you got to do you. And if you can do that well, you're going to get way more respect. And and I'm just starting to get away from that. You know, it's like, let's just let just let your 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 set, your actions, your behavior. Let that speak for you. You know, and 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 I, and I've and I've had a few experiences where you know I didn't uh, mention anything that was even close to the Bible, and I, I watched one of the, the the nastiest hecklers you could ever imagine stop, listen to my set, and when it was over, she came over to me and said, "Thank you for your set. You were talking about your family, and it, it made me realize that I'm in a dysfunctional situation because of my own choices." Now. How she got that out of my set, I don't know. But the Holy Spirit used me for her. Come on, be the light, Maurice. And I started thinking, man, I got I to gotta start thinking more like that on stage. Instead of like Brooklyn was saying, I just want everybody to love me. I just want to be wretched pride. No, man, just do what God told you to do. And, and do that set and be good with it. I'm right. done. Okay, well, guys, we, we got to get out of here. Hey, Fifi, what you got going on this week in Pompano Beach? Um, this week, I will be uh, going to a couple of doctor's visits with my kids. Um, All right. Oh, you mean with comedy? Oh, uh, don't have comedy. any shows this week. I do have an event, uh, actually two events on the 25th. Okay. One, uh, we have a brunch that I'm doing in Delray where I'll be hosting. And then another one. Uh, that following week, I'll be at Radiant Living Worship Center on June 11th, doing a women's brunch there. A couple of different things. I'm going to be posting them on Instagram. So follow me at Comedian Thiefy. 
Yes, absolutely. And Thor Ramsey. Uh, yeah, well, the biggest thing is like next week we start the official publicity uh, kickoff of the uh, novel I just had published called The End Times Comedy Show. Okay. Set in 1998, because that's when I started writing it. So wow. um, it's, a, it's about a comedian living in Los Angeles who's trying to deconvert, which is kind of a thing these days. But uh, it's really wow. a satire of someone trying to deconvert. It's really what it is. So interesting. Yeah. Love, Love the premise. Love the premise. Michelle Van Dusen, what you got going on? Uh, let's see. Tomorrow is uh, our next episode of the Laugh Support podcast drops with uh, Dan McGowan. Okay. And then I'll be in Indiana June 4th um, doing the popcorn and punchlines, um, like eight comedians, one night kind of a thing. It's going to be at Crossroads uh, Church okay. in Westerfield. Well, it'll be at the conference center at like IMMI or something, whatever that means. That's okay. the building. It's like a big building. And other than that, I'm just chilling out and cleaning my house and taking care of my kids and my husband and my dog, my old, old dog. There it is. There it is. And dressed Brooklyn. fancy. Okay. <laughs> Brooklyn Whitmer, who's in the film, Don't Say My Name. When can we expect to see you in this film? Um, right now, we, well, this past fall, we have shown it in select theaters, and we're hoping to bring it internationally, so keep an eye out for that. And um, we're hoping to release the movie this summer, so maybe. We'll see. Um, okay. Yeah, so keep up on our social media pages. We have a page on Facebook, Don't Say My Name, and an Instagram, at Don't Say My Name Film. And we okay. have a website. Don't say my name.com. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I had so much more to say. We got to get out of here. KCHF TV in Albuquerque is going to uh, body slam me if I don't get the time right. However, if you <laughs> enjoyed this show and, 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 and you really enjoyed it, hey, like it and share it and subscribe to the Maurice Brown Comedy Channel, as well as any social media engine that Brooklyn Whitmer and Felicia Frazier and Thor Ramsey and Michelle Van Dusen are a part of. And if you just came in and you're like, I missed the show. And I just, I just I want to apologize. You. I want to apologize to everyone who's ever been body slammed. So just, yes. uh, just want to get yeah, that out. That's there. just thank you for putting that disclaimer out there, yeah. Thor. Thank you so much. But if you are like, I miss Maurice's show, don't worry about it because tomorrow, about midday on the Creative Motion Network, you can see the whole darn thing on Roku TV and every Saturday night at 8 p.m. and 12 midnight on KCHF TV, TV 11 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. You can watch this show breaking down the four walls, Maurice Brown and these fine comedians that you're looking at right now. Guys, thanks so much for being on the show. Had a whole lot more to say, couldn't get it out. But hey, until the next time we meet, may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you and your families, everybody. God bless you. Thanks, brother.